So thanks for coming. The talk was supposed to be just about the EC2 interface in CloudStack, and then I thought you know, it would be good to also mention the GCE interface, so the Google Compute Engine interface. Um, the talk is fairly simple, and mostly I'm going to show you those two projects and how they implemented the, uh, the interface. Okay? Uh, some of you who were in the tutorial on, uh, on Wednesday, uh, you might have tried the, the EC2 interface okay, already, so I'll, I'll give a demo of that one but also talk about the, the Google Compute Engine interface. Uh, <coughs> so when we talk about clouds, I mean, of course, everybody has, yeah, they have their own point of view, but what's a cloud, what they want to get from a cloud, and so on. For me, really, you know, the cloud, it's Amazon, Amazon Web Services. When they started, you know, 2005, 2006, uh, and they first released uh, S3 and EC2, that was really, uh, you know, a huge game changer. You know, you make a call, you get, a, you get the instance, you SSH, you know, that was really uh, extremely impressive. Uh, obviously, they are the world leader uh, in public clouds, uh, and they keep on cutting their prices, and now we see Google and Microsoft trying to, uh, to kind of chase them. What's, what's really impressive about Amazon... Back, back, okay. Don't touch the mic. Um, is that they keep on adding services. So not only S3 and EC2, but you know, in terms of storage, of course they have EBS, Glacier, Data Warehouse, you, know, you name it, CloudFront. Um, they're also bringing up new services in terms of uh, big data. So of course they had Elastic Map Reuse very early on, which underlyingly you know, is a uh, Hadoop cluster with uh, Map Reuse enabled. Uh, now they have Kinesis for real-time data processing and so on. Redshift for data warehouse. And what's really, really uh, amazing is that all those services are coming online and they offer an API, and a very rich API so that you can access all of this on demand uh, through any type of you know, favorite language, but basically a, a programming interface. And to me, that's really what the cloud is about, is that you know, the ability to on-demand provision services, access services, and then you know, do it like as a, as a developer. So, what is CloudStack really doing about you know, uh, Amazon? And if you, if you know about Yucca, Eucalyptus, uh, their strategy was really to be a, an Amazon clone, especially EC2 clone. Uh, and I wish that you know, in CloudStack we would do the same and put you know, a lot of emphasis into uh, being uh, Amazon compliant. Uh, so we are, I'll, sh I'll show you this, but you know, hopefully we, we would like to, uh, to see more. But going back a little bit and talking about the, the API and why, why it's very, uh, very powerful to have an API, because then you have a very large ecosystem of software out there that developer operators are using. And all, the, all that ecosystem, all those softwares that people are using are using the API and the CloudStack API, of course. So a big chunk of my, uh, of my work is actually to look at the, uh, the ecosystem out there that everybody is using for, uh, for cloud computing and making sure that that ecosystem uh, works well with, the, with CloudStack. So whether you're taking any configuration management system like Ansible, Chef, Puppet, um, SaltStack, you know, all those now have some type of uh, interface to the CloudStack API, okay? The Knife CloudStack plugin. Uh, Ansible has an inventory mechanism based on LibCloud. Uh, SaltStack has Salt Cloud, which allows you to provision machines in the cloud and then install the Salt Master and, and Minions and so on. Um, Vagrant has a CloudStack plugin, uh, and, and you name it. So we have a very vibrant ecosystem for CloudStack. And what was missing really is the, the EC2 and the, the GC interface. But you know, before I get into that, so the, the API that I said, you know, CloudStack has a very powerful API that, that powers that ecosystem. That API is REST-like. Uh, I always make a point of, of you know, mentioning it. It's not RESTful. It's because it's just using HTTP GET, sometimes POST, and then the, the URI is actually more of a query syntax than just a, a very clean um, uh, REST-like uh, RESTful system. Uh, it's not that bad because if you look at the, the services from Amazon, they're actually query, you know, query-like uh, API. Uh, Google Compute Engine is much more RESTful, okay? So <coughs> that API is great, and it's not a standard, okay? 
Uh, neither is Amazon, but Amazon API, the Amazon interface is the de facto standard out there. Everybody uses it, but it's not a standard. The Google Compute Engine, that's the, that's the logo of Google right here, GCE. That's not a standard either, and that's different than the Amazon uh, interface. So there are standards efforts out there, uh, CME from DMTF and uh, OCCI from OGF. But really, I'm not seeing, I mean, except a few projects in Europe, I'm not seeing anybody in productions uh, or you know, users in the enterprise making any use of those uh, standards. So really the push and what's interesting for us in CloudStack is making sure that we are Amazon compliant and you know, if GCE uh, gets more and more uh, steam you know, under, no, that's not the expression. I was gonna say steam under their legs. That doesn't work, no? <laughs> what's the expression, Russell, no? Gathers more steam, okay. So if GCE starts catching up with Amazon, you know, it would be good to have a, a GCE interface. Does that make sense? Yes? So, <coughs> you know, the talk was just supposed to be about AWS, but I thought I would, you know, put in the, the GCE as well. Um, it, it's very important because uh, in December of uh, last year, so uh, Google made, uh, you know, GCE uh, generally available, GA and they cut prices and very recently, I think late March, they announced like live migration uh, um, of VMs in their, in their data center and so on. So most likely GCE is going to, uh, to get better and better and it's gonna be interesting to see if they bring up new services just like Amazon, so you know, MapReduce interface, maybe a real-time processing interface and so on. So how can, we, how can we offer a GCE interface to CloudStack? That's really the point because that's totally different from the CloudStack API. Uh, so I work with some, uh, some students, uh, one of them uh, who did the Google Summer of Code uh, last year with CloudStack. And basically what we did is we created a, a little application we call GStack. So it's a server that sits in front of uh, your CloudStack cloud. And basically it's going to do uh, an API translation so it receives API calls that you make with any of the Google tools, okay? And then it's, it's, so it receives those calls and then you know, processes the request, of course, and then recreates the corresponding CloudStack API and makes that call and then back, okay? So it's just a, you could call it uh, an adapter or an API translator or something, okay? So for Google, we have GStack. Uh, I'm a lot into implementation details. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's a Python Flask application. Uh, and I'll show you a little bit uh, how it works. Unfortunately, when Google went GA, they broke our app because of course they changed a little bit the API, they changed the responses and things like this. So right now, we haven't had time to, uh, to fix it. Uh, if anybody wants to have a look at it and, uh, and help us uh, you know, fix a little bit the responses and so on, uh, it, needs a, it needs a little bit of, uh, of love, okay? But basically you have you know, now command line client uh, GCUtil, that's the Google tool. It comes from Google, developed by Google. Uh, to make it work with CloudStack, we have to define some parameters in like a configuration file that we, we need to pass. Uh, a project, that's a Google, that's a Google uh, a term. And for us, um, in the cloud that we are using here, it was just the email of the user. And then you make the call list machine types. So that's, you know, again, given by Google. And then you get the results, except that this comes from a CloudStack cloud, okay? Same thing if you wanna create a firewall, add firewall, you wanna open uh, 22 for SSH, get firewall, SSH, you get the description of that firewall. And you see underneath, I mean, get firewall, that's not a CloudStack uh, API, but you see that would be a, uh, list security groups uh, with the name of the security group of SSH. So all of that works. Uh, you can also start instances. Here you see list instances. The start instance is just add instance. So that works well. The AWS interface, that's pretty much the same, the same idea. Again, it's a server that runs that maps the API. Uh, it's implemented the same way, except that uh, the guys who did it, so it's, uh, one of them is the same that did the G, uh, GCE interface. 
Um, but at the beginning, they didn't know Python. They're just like 20-year-old kids from uh, Ireland. So what they've done for the AWS interface is actually much better than for the, the Google interface. Um, what you have in there is just EC2. Okay? If you look at all the AWS services, um, we're not at the level of offering EMR or anything like this. So really, the foundation is EC2. Uh, CloudStack will never offer S3 as such. Okay? CloudStack is not an object store. Uh, there is no plan to, uh, to become an object store. And really, if you need to bring in S3 in your data center, uh, you know, I always say look at React CS from Basho or Ceph or things like this to, get a, to expose an S3 compatible API. Okay? So there is no need for us to look at S3. We just need EC2, and then once we have a very solid EC2 interface, we can start uh, building up to offer more interesting uh, services. In, uh, in CloudStack, however, you know that there is an existing AWS API interface. Okay? So when you install the CloudStack packages, you can run uh, an EC2 interface. But it's, uh, it's quite old. Uh, it's written in Java. It runs with Axis. And it causes you know, packaging and, and build problems. It's also responsible for maybe 40% of the lines of code in CloudStack. That we need, we need to check. But there is a lot of generated code uh, for, that, uh, for that package. So really, my, uh, my goal there was to uh, remove this from the CloudStack source code so that we get something much smaller, easier to maintain, easier to build, and so on. And then we build a separate EC2 interface, which would be you know, more up-to-date and also easier to maintain. Okay? So that was, the, that was the aim of the project, really. Remove the native EC2 interface in CloudStack, simplify the packaging, and then get to a level where we have you know, a newer code base that we can, uh, we can work on. So here comes EC2 stack. That was just released uh, a month ago. Uh, and again, it's a Python uh, Flask application, so it's a little, uh, little server that runs and then implements the call. I'll, I'll show you a little bit the, the code. Uh, of course, the question is, what's your coverage in terms of API? So right now, we have roughly 33% of the uh, EC2 EBS API. Um, so create key pair, create key pair, delete key pair, describe key pair, uh, create security group, Describe security group, add rule, uh, create volume, attach volume, detach volume, create instance, list instance, and so on and so on. So that's roughly 33% of the API um, EC2 EBS uh, API. And <coughs> it should be fairly easy to add uh, and get a much stronger fidelity with the, uh, the complete EC2 and EBS. I'm kind of putting those two together. So once you run that application, then it becomes as simple as uh, using the AWS uh, CLI, for example, here. Uh, AWS EC2 describe images, and you see that what happens is that you have to specify a different endpoint. Okay? Otherwise, it would go to like a AWS region. Um, so here we specify an endpoint that's this application EC2 stack running locally. Okay? So the, the CLI will make the call to EC2 stack running locally, and then EC2 stack is going to basically uh, process the request and make the call to CloudStack. Before I give you the demo, I also want to mention that um, <coughs> there was a talk on AWS CloudFormation uh, interface. So there is a project called Stactician uh, that was originated by Shiradip Vital and then Amog Vasekar is working on this. So that's separate from EC2 stack, but it offers uh, a CloudFormation service, an AWS CloudFormation service. So if you're not familiar with cloud formations, basically it's uh, you know, templates uh, that define a complete application-like uh, system. So if you want to set up, for example, a LAMP stack, you, know, you have templates for LAMP stack with MySQL, Apache, PHP, blah, blah. And you feed that to the AWS CloudFormation service, and it's going to provision everything for you. Okay? So what they did with Tactician is that you can use those exact same templates. Well almost exact same templates, and then feed it to Stactician, and it's going to create that LAMP stack in a cloud stack cloud. Okay? Uh, I didn't get the logo, but there was also another talk by, uh, by Sheridip about StackWatch, which is supposed to be an, an equivalent to CloudWatch. Okay? 
So all of this gives you the idea that you know, we are trying to push for better fidelity with, uh, with AWS. Um, so I'm going to show you some demo. You guys want to see a demo? OK, I love demos. OK, let me, let me show you the code maybe first. OK, so it's a Flask application. Uh, so basically, Flask, you know, it's a very nice framework to, to be able to expose a web service. Um, so if you look at the, the default route, OK, it's uh, this line here. Since uh, EC2 is really a query API, there is only one route, which is slash, and then it's a post method. With Flask, you, sh you, you, would, be also you would be able to, uh, to define different routes, different URIs and also respond if you have different verbs being used, okay? But in the case of EC2, it's just gonna be that single route, okay? So what's interesting is the get action. So basically, we receive the, the HTTP request from any of the AWS client, and then we extract the action. So if it's delete volume or, no, let's say, yeah, whatever, create volume, delete key pair, that's the, the action coming from the AWS client, and then that maps to a method that we, uh, we implement there. So you go back here, and we have providers. That was kind of a little bit sneaky. What I wanted the guys to do is that, you know, technically that architecture is a little bit abstract. So if you wanted to use this for OpenStack or Azure or something else, you could write a provider for those clouds, okay? So right now, there is only one provider, which is CloudStack. So you click on CloudStack, and now you see the actual categories of API that, uh, that are in play. For example, in key pair, now you see the method that the HTTP call you know, would, uh, would basically use. So create key pair, we basically uh, <coughs> look at the parameters, and then we make the, uh, the request, and that request it's this one, which is just a request, uh, an HTTP request to, uh, to CloudStack, okay? So that's just mapping everything. So here you see we extract the, the information, create SSH key pair being the API of, uh, of CloudStack. Does that make sense? Okay. So <coughs> to run it, uh, you can get it from uh, the, the Python install, the, yeah, Python package installer, pip install EC2 stack. There's a configuration file. So here it just says, you know, you run the app locally, 000, 5000. And then I'm actually going to use a, a production cloud stack cloud from my buddies in Switzerland, Exoscale. So you define the endpoint of that cloud stack system. Uh, you, could, you can define also a mapping of service offerings, okay? Because the clients, the uh, AWS clients may uh, by default use AWS offerings, so m1.small, m1.large, and so on. So in, the, in that configuration file, you would do a mapping. You would say m1.small for Amazon. You know, for me, it's you know, tiny or whatever. So you do this. There is a, there is a EC2 stack command. There is a configure command where you can actually uh, run it and, and, and write that file. So now you run the app. Of course, here it's not yet demonized and, and so on, but so you have the server running on 5,000, port 5,000, waiting for request from an AWS uh, client. So I'm just gonna keep it running here. And AWS, you can install the uh, AWS CLI. And in the config file, you just write the, the name of the region, which is your cloud stack zone, and then you put in your keys, okay? API key, secret key from cloud stack. And now we should do AWS EC2, describe uh, availability zones, for example, and we say that the endpoint is localhost. 5,000. Yay! Okay. 
can change the output. <coughs> Hopefully, uh, we're going to make a pull request to uh, the AWS client so that the endpoint, uh, we can specify the endpoint in the configuration file. So that would make it extremely clean. So we would just do AWS EC2 describability zone, and it would pull the appropriate, the appropriate information from the config file. No need to do mess the command line with the, the endpoint, and then you get the, uh, the answers. Okay. Of course, you have EC2, uh, I think it's describe key pairs, describe key pairs. You get your key pairs, okay? Um, <coughs> I did that before. So if I go to the production cloud, Uh, I'm going to have to renew my keys. <laughs> it's going to be on camera. <laughs> so here you see that I have, uh, I have some uh, SSH key pair. Let me delete that one from the UI. That's actually cloud stack, but they did a, a new UI. OK, so I only have one. So if I go back here, I only have one. Okay. It's kind of cleaner with the. You can, of course, create create key pair, I think. Key name. Typing too fast. Here you go. So you can create the key pair. You get your private key. And if we go back here, create the key pair. Okay. So you can also describe images, uh, start instances. So let's do the describe images. Describe images, you can start instances, uh, stop them, restart them, terminate them, so you see <coughs> here the result. And every time you make a call, of course, you see the post request coming to your, uh, your little app, okay? Um, the EC2, the Google, the GC interface, it's gonna be exactly the same uh, setup. You run that little server, except that it's G stack, and then you make requests with the GC util uh, client. One more, maybe, uh, just showing you that if you like, if you like code. So that AWS client, uh, CLI, comes from uh, AWS uh, directly, but it uses Boto, the Python module, you know, well-known Python module to talk to all the AWS services. So you can also write straight up uh, a, Python, a Python script with Boto. So, I mean, forget about some of this, but boto.ec2, that's your, uh, your module, your keys. I'll change my keys. Don't, don't think about <laughs> stealing them. Here you initiate the connection, connect EC2. <coughs> and again, you do that connection, you do that connection to, you know, path slash, 5,000, so you're going to get a Boto connection directly to that app with the latest API version, which is a big issue because the, the biggest problem with the native AWS API package in CloudStack was that it was an old API version, so that causes a bunch of uh, problems. So here it's the latest. Um, so let's try to use that one. I'm using IPython to get an interactive shell, okay? So now we have a, a connection object directly uh, in, that, uh, in that session, which is an EC2 connection. So you see all the uh, EC2 calls available. 
and it's connected to EC2 stack. Okay. So for example, you do con, I think it's describe images. No. Get all images. Yeah. And you get the response. Okay. So you get the idea. Uh, only roughly 30% of the API are covered, but it's working fairly well with the uh, WSCLI, of course the Python, uh, Boto module, uh, and hopefully we're going to be able to add more uh, APIs in that application. It's on GitHub. If anybody wants to uh, you know, make pull requests to add some support, that would be great. And if you also want to look at the GCE interface, uh, it needs a little bit more love and more unit tests and things like this. But uh, it's working very well, and uh, I hope we're going to keep on uh, developing uh, those two little applications. So conclusions, uh, the CloudStack API is great. Okay, we could live with the CloudStack API. It works well. It says, you know, it's like 300 methods. Uh, you can use things like CloudMonkey to, uh, you know, use the, the CloudStack API and you get 100% coverage of the API. So that's, you know, that's perfect. Uh, there is a very, very vibrant ecosystem uh, out there, you know, in a, whether it's configuration management, uh, uh, data collection, uh, you name it. So, you know, we have a, a pretty good ecosystem and we keep on adding CloudStack support in all of this. Uh, but really, if, you, if you're thinking about hybrid cloud and you're already using a public cloud, you know, in your, uh, in your setup, if you're using Google or AWS, then we want to make sure that, or at least I want to make sure that CloudStack offers a pretty uh, high fidelity interface, uh, whatever public cloud you're, you're using. And this is it. Thank you very much.